Hello everyone and welcome to my tutorial on how I record games and PC stuff with a program known as FF Split here. It's a free Windows only program but apparently they're going to make it cross platform uh, soon. I don't know when that's going to be but they say they're working on it. But anyway this is the program that I use to record stuff when I, use, when I uh, record stuff on the PC. But believe it or not how I record stuff on it starts off it. <laughs> the first thing you want to do is open up something like say SNES 9X here. Anything that you would like to record basically. And I can only record stuff in windowed mode so yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, maybe I'll be able to record it in full screen in the future but I always come up with a black screen for whatever reason no matter what settings I use. But anyway I'm gonna open up Donkey Kong Country 3 here and now what I'm gonna do here is wait for something to fill out this entire window here with color basically. The reason why I want to do that is because I would like to record only within that area and when it happens I'm gonna hit the print screen button on the, the keyboard so just wait for it. Wait for it. Believe me your patience will be rewarded with perfect quality. Believe me. Just wait for it. Wait for it. There you go. This should do perfectly. See how the pixels are all the way to the end of the window like so? Yeah. Alright, so now that I got a screen cap of that I'm gonna close this and then open up this program. This is another free thingamabob called GIMP 2.8. Well, it's version 2.8.10, but it's mainly called GIMP 2.8. And it's, it's a cross-platform program and I'm gonna use it to uh, uh, put that screenshot into and then crop out the screenshot of the game window. The reason why I do this is because I need to know the resolution of that game window screen. So, okay, now that GIMP is open, um, my GIMP might look different than your GIMP because I did a lot of modifications and additions to it, but that's okay. The stuff that I'm going to show you how to use here are all basic tools. So anyway, I'm going to hit Control V to paste the screen cap that I made in there. Yeah, isn't that handy? And now what I'm going to do is uh, open up the navigation, which is already open here at the uh, bottom left here but uh, I'm going to show you how to open up the navigation windows, dockable dialogues, and then you click the uh, navigation right here and then it'll open up right down here or maybe it'll pop out in a new window. It's yeah GIMP is a little finicky but it works really well anyway. <laughs> so anyway once you, once you got the navigator going out here um, what you want to do is grab the crop tool. It looks like a, a razor blade up in your toolbox here and you want to crop out the the screen of the game window. Now it's not pixel perfect right now but it will be. Just watch this. I'm going to use the navigation tool to zoom in like so, really close up and go to a corner like this. And then I'm going to take the spot that's all within the game's color like that. Like wherever the game's colorations you see hits the end of the window, that is where you want to crop out the screen. Now I'm going to go to the opposite corner and do the same thing by the pixel. And now we got a screen cap of the game. But why did I do this? So that's because I it's because I need to know the resolution of the game. I don't know if you can see it here, but it's 512 by 448 pixels. And that's pretty much all I need to know to do a recording on SNES 9X. So uh, what I'm going to do here though is uh, export this as blah, 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 just just to save some time here uh, in case I forget about that resolution but I don't think I will but I'm going to export it as a PNG and save it as that I'm going to close GIMP there we go here is the screen cap that I made of the game and if I right click it and click properties you'll be able to go to details and then see the resolution right here in the image uh, dimensions. So there you go. But I already have this uh, written down just for the sake of speed and whatnot. But anyway, now that you have that set up, open up FF Split, and when you open it for the first time, you're gonna end up going to this configure screen. Now I'm gonna go through each of these six tabs at the top in order uh, to show you how I like to uh, configure FF Split for my needs. So, uh, starting with the session tab, all I do is click local recording. 
that's all I do because all I want to do here is record game footage in this particular stream. I mean, not stream, in this particular recording, excuse me. So that's all I do. You can add a new encoder, encoder profile and tick the local recording for that one as well, but nah, I'm just going to leave it as is because I, 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 I typically change this stuff as I go anyway, depending on the game that I play. So I'm just going to leave default and local recording, and that's what I recommend you do the same as well. Um, now I'm going to go to the output tab, output local recording, output type local recording. <laughs> Of course, you know, it's it's all got to match up. And now for the folder path that you want to save your video in. Its default is the videos place, but I like to put it uh, in the pictures because that's where my camera puts uh, videos and stuff like that. So I have a folder specifically dedicated to FF Split for FF Split to go into, uh, which I named 01 space FF Split, you know, so it appears at the very top of the pictures list. So I select, select that. You can put this in whatever folder you please. Just put it somewhere that you know you'll be able to retrieve your uh, video. And now for the file format, you always want this to be MP4, I, I would say, because FLV and MKV are rather odd file types and not all video editors can take them, but most video editors can, however, take MP4. So yeah, that's why I select mp4 for the sake of versatility. The rest of the stuff I just leave as is. Uh, now for the encoder. This is the spot that you need to know the video resolution of the game that you would like to record or the thing that you would like to record. In this case it's 512, remember that was the horizontal resolution, by 448. Now what's weird about FF Split is that you have to have a number that is divisible by 2 in the video resolution, so both of these numbers have to be even. So if the thing that you're recording has an odd number, just reduce the number of that, um, the, the odd number by one, and you'll be able to record uh, still with nice quality. All right, now for the frame rate, I always pick 60 frames per second because it is extra smooth that way. Uh, the video bit rate, I make it 2000 kbps because I think it gets better quality than 1000 kbps. Just a little bit better, and yeah, <laughs> I want to work with the best I possibly can work with. But if your computer can't handle such a high rate, lower it, you'll know it if it can't handle it, because it'll lag like crazy and maybe even make a crash. No, <laughs> actually, I don't know, but it'll probably just make it lag. Um, let's see here. I think that's all that I have to set up with. Uh, the rest of the stuff I leave as defaults. Um, the capture tab. I leave all at defaults, zeros, and default Windows playback, default recording device, blah, 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 blah. Uh, hotkeys, you can make shortcut keys for starting your recording, streams, whatever you'd like to do. Um, oh, I should show you back at the uh, um, output here. Uh, on the local recording here at the output type, you can actually use this uh, FF Split to stream to Twitch, Hitbox, YouTube, Ustream, etc., etc. Uh, by setting that up, but that but this isn't a video tutorial on that. I just thought I would show you that FF Split can do live streaming if you would like to do it. Uh, and then anyway, finally done with the hotkeys, and we can go to miscellaneous here. Uh, the only thing that I change here, or I should say, make sure is um, checked, is the disable Windows arrow thing because it increases performance. For, I have Windows 7 and it says it degrades performance if uh, Windows Arrow is activa activated, which is true, I've tested it. So I always make sure Windows Arrow is disabled. Okay, now I hit apply, then OK, and FF Split will restart. And I just noticed that uh, Windows Arrow just popped back up again. It's it's a glitch in the latest um, version of FF Split here. I contacted them about that and they said they'll fix it in the next build. So uh, yeah, that's cool. So I don't have to worry about, I mean, I won't have to worry about that in the future. But uh, if in the build that uh, it keeps re-enabling Windows Arrow, just go back to, uh, I'll show you this, I went a little fast here, Session, Encoder, Configure, and then you go, this is the same uh, window that we had open before. So this is how to get to this window if um, you've already set up FF Splits and it's not working for you. That's how you get back to um, these tabs right here to get it all set up. Then we go to miscellaneous tab, disable Windows arrow, it'll make the screen flash as, as it disables it. Hit apply and then hit OK. Now we want to set up the window so that we can record the game in a relatively comfortable way. So let's 
open up SNES 9X and move them around like that. I think that's a, a pretty nice setup there. But as you can tell, it's not really, you know, capturing the window here. So how do we get that? Well, first let's delete this because it's recording the entire screen at the moment. Well, I should say if I were to start it, it would record the entire screen and that's not what I want. So I'm going to click that, hit delete. Yes, I would like to delete it. And then we got empty canvas. And now I want to add a new layer because I'm going to make my own layer here. Um, you can select a region, uh, like say you can draw your own box to record stuff into, but it doesn't really doesn't really work all that well, really, <laughs> all the time. Well, there you go, it's working, there we go. But uh, yeah, you can make your own region and stuff like that if you would please, and you know, move it around however you would like to on the canvas, but I prefer it if it would just like snapped in place. But anyway, I'm gonna restart that. I just wanted to show you the region thing. But what I do is I just click select window, and then see how it highlights the entire window as if I was doing a region selection um, recording right away? Look at that, see how it snaps to the thing that the mouse is in? Yep, so click inside the SNES 9X window. And now let's open up a game to see if it is recording. And look at that, well, I should say not recording to see if it recognizes the screen. Um, Cause you might have to play with these settings here to, to get the screen to show up on the canvas. Always watch the canvas to make sure the canvas is uh, showing what you want to show, but as you see it's it's working perfectly fine right now um, You might want to disable the mouse cursor so you don't see it on the screen like that see that it's it's pretty handy uh, Just in case you accidentally leave it on there um, capturing it as a region might be the way to get the um, Get this window to show up on here sometimes it all depends on the settings and game and system It's it's kind of kind of weird so play with stuff here if it's not working right, but it should probably work right. Um, if for some reason the select window thing doesn't detect this window properly, you can go into this drop down menu and select it from this list of stuff that's that it detects as being open. In this case, it's SNES 9X. Well, anyway, when you're ready, click add layer. And now what I like to do here is, believe it or not, mute the microphone because that'll cause an echo um, when I'm recording the, because it records like a little bit differently but like you can see there's even a slight difference in the uh, um, audio channel thingy here so what I like to do here just to get rid of the echo is just to mute the microphone like that and then record my voice separately uh, like what I'm doing now and then edit it together uh, in a video editor or something like that and when you're ready to record which we are right now just click start and you will start recording just like that Oh yeah, look at us recording like a pro. <laughs> and when you're done and when you're uh, done recording, hit stop. And now if you want to see your recording, I'm gonna close this so we can actually hear the thing we record we recorded. Browse to the spot that you did, uh, that you saved it in. In this case I saved it to that picture 01FF split folder, as you remember. And there is our video that we just made. Yeah! It really is as simple as that. It, I mean, it, it took me a while to make this tutorial, but it, it's not all that difficult to, you know, put together or anything like that. It's all pretty much intuitive overall. All right, and that concludes this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Victory music for a complete tutorial. Oh, it's over. <laughs>